OK, so this is the standard equation of a circle in 2D, one which has got centre with coordinates a, b, and a radius of r. And you can think of this as, if you imagine square rooting both sides here, this is like Pythagoras telling us that the distance from every point x, y to the centre a, b is always this fixed distance r, so it describes a circle with radius r with that as its centre. And if we try and do the same thing now but in 3D, let's just add in a z coordinate and we'll add a c to our centre. So then in 3D you can imagine taking square roots again here and you'd get all of the points x, y, z which satisfy this equation would now be a fixed distance from this new centre a, b, c. But unfortunately in 3D this defines a sphere rather than a circle. So how can we get the equation of a circle in general in 3D? Well we can use this sphere actually and let's just draw a picture here. So if you use your imagination a bit and pretend we've got a sphere here, you can get a circle from a sphere by intersecting it with a plane. So if we now draw in a plane as well, and then if you see where these two intersect, this is going to form a circle shape. So where our sphere meets our plane, we're going to get a circle. And just to make things a bit nicer to work with as well, we can say that the centre of this circle can also be the centre of our sphere. So the it's like the plane is cutting through the equator of this sphere almost. So how do we define the equation of a plane in 3D then? Well, I'm just going to explain a bit where this is coming from. So we can characterise a plane in 3D by talking about its normal vector. So we want a plane which is normal to, let's call it n, and we'll say this is a vector with components p, q, r. But then we also need to say a point which is contained in the plane as well as just the normal vector so that we don't define a different parallel plane. So we also want it to contain a certain point and we'll say it contains the centre of this circle, A, B, C. So now just to justify a bit where the equation is coming from, let's draw out our coordinate axes. And if we draw out our plane as well, then we've got, first of all, we know a point A, B, C lies within our plane. So we've got A, B, C over here. And let's say we've got another point, just our general point X, Y, Z contained in the plane. Then we also know that we've got this normal vector N. So if we draw in the normal vector N here, what this really means is this normal vector is normal to any line contained in our plane. So if X, Y, Z is contained in our plane, then this vector going from A, B, C to X, Y, Z has got to be normal to our normal vector. So that has to be a right angle there. So we can characterise this now using the dot product. So this vector going from a, b, c to x, y, z is just x minus a, y minus b, z minus c. And then if we take the dot product of this with our normal vector, which is p, q, r, then we just need this to be equal to zero in order for these two to be normal to each other. So this gives them a nice way then of characterising the equation of a plane in 3D. And we can even expand this out, just multiplying each of the little pairs there. So we've got p times x minus a plus q times y minus b plus r times z minus c equals zero. So then this gives us the equation of a plane containing this point a, b, c and normal to this vector n with components p, q, r. So now these two equations do define every circle in 3D. These are all the circles with centre A, B, C, radius R, and then contained in a plane which is normal to this P, Q, R, which also contains the centre A, B, C. But it would also be nice if we could just have a single equation so that we do have the equation of a circle in 3D rather than two equations which happen to define a circle in 3D. So it's quite a nice way of combining these two into a single equation. So if we take this equation, the first one, and imagine subtracting r squared, then we get x minus a squared plus y minus b squared plus z minus c squared take away r squared. So we need this to be equal to zero, and we also need the left-hand side of our second equation to be equal to zero. So we're going to square all of this, and then we're going to add the square of the left-hand side of our second equation as well. And then if we set this equal to zero, we're going to see that actually the only way for our left-hand side here to be equal to zero is that this expression in the bracket has to be zero, and so does this expression in the second bracket. So this is quite a nice way of just combining two equations into a single equation then. So then we've got the equation of a circle in 3D, or at least the Cartesian equation of one. So our previous equation of a circle in 2D actually isn't the only equation for a circle in 2D. So we can also have a parametric equation like these. 
So if we look at this first example, this is saying that all of our x and y coordinates, we've got x is r cos theta, and then y has to be r sine theta, where theta is going from 0 up to 2 pi radians, or up to 360 degrees if you prefer. So if we try and draw out all of the x and y points which satisfy this equation, we've got first of all when theta is 0, x is r and y is 0, and then we go around until we get up to where theta is pi over 2, y would be r and x would be 0, and then we keep going around like this until we get to 2 pi, and you see we get a circle radius r with the centre at the origin. Now if we want a circle more generally with any centre, we can just add a and b to our x and y coordinates respectively to get the general parametric form then of a circle in 2D. And we can actually do something very similar in 3D as well. So if you imagine we've got a plane in 3D which contains our circle, let's draw our circle in as well, then we can also have, let's say at the centre of our circle, let's say we've got two vectors coming out which are going to be analogous to our x and y axes in 2D. So if we draw these out, let's say we've got one of our vectors here and one of our vectors here, and they're perpendicular to each other. So we'll call this one P, and we'll call this vector Q, which are, you can think of these coming out of the centre of our circle. So then just like before, like how we had R cos theta and R sine theta, we can go around this circle from the centre here by having, we would have R times cos theta times P. So let's write this out, R cos theta times the vector P, then plus r sine theta times the vector q. So this would go from the centre to this point, and then it would go round, all the way round, until we repeat on ourselves. So this would give us our circle, but then how do we get to this point at the centre? So this would effectively give us our circle if the centre was the origin. But then let's imagine the origin somewhere over here. We need to get to our centre first. So we just need to add in this vector going to the centre. So if we say that our centre is a, b, c, then we can characterise our more general form of a parametric equation for a circle in 3D as all of the x, y, z points which satisfy x, y, z is a, b, c plus we've got r cos theta times p plus r sine theta times this vector q. And of course this is a bit restrictive because we need p and q to be perpendicular to each other so we need We'll write this as p dot q needs to be equal to zero, so the dot product's zero when they're perpendicular. So we'll see if there's another way of doing this that feels a bit more natural and will complement the general form for the parametric form of a plane in 3D. So typically, if you're given the parametric form of a plane in 3D, it's going to look like this, where x, y, and z is our general point which lies on the plane. So we'll just draw a sketch and digest what's going on here. So if you imagine we've got our plane, and let's say the origin is somewhere over here. So first of all, to get to a point on our plane, we have this vector ABC, which is the position vector of a point which lies on our plane. So we can call this point ABC here. So we get onto our plane following this vector, and then we can get to any other point in our plane just by having some scalar multiples of U and V, so a linear combination of these two. So if we draw these two in now, these are just any two vectors which are contained in our planes, so we've got u and v here, and as long as these two aren't parallel to each other, then we can always get to any point in our plane. Let's say this point over here you could get to with some multiple of u and some multiple of v once we've got onto our plane using this a, b, c. So this justifies where we've got this form for the parametric equation of a plane from. And it would be really nice now if we were given a parametric equation of a plane and we're told we're interested in a circle with radius r and center a, b, c, how do we then write the parametric form of that circle? So before we saw we needed the p and q vectors in our equation for the circle to be perpendicular to each other, and we also needed them to be unit vectors. We needed them to have magnitude 1, so that when we multiply by r here we are getting a circle of radius r. So now at the moment these u and v don't have to be perpendicular to each other and they also don't have to be unit vectors. So it's quite easy just to get unit vectors out of these. So we can introduce this notation u hat just means this is defined as the unit vector in the direction of u, so 1 over the magnitude of u times u. And similarly for v hat this is the unit direction, unit vector in the direction of the vector v. 
So then we can use this interesting trick here to get out two vectors which are going to be perpendicular to each other now. And these two vectors are going to be u hat plus v hat, and the other one is going to be u hat minus v hat. So if you imagine taking the dot product of these, I'm going to skip some of the steps in the working here, but if you have u hat dot u hat, this is just the magnitude of u hat squared. And then where you've got v hat dot u hat, we've also got minus u hat dot v hat. So these two cancel out with each other. And then v hat dot negative v hat, we just take away, this is the magnitude of v hat squared. So if you have a vector, the dot product of it with itself, you just get the magnitude squared of that vector. But then we know that u hat and v hat are both unit vectors. So this is just one minus one. So this is actually just zero. So then this is telling us that these two vectors are perpendicular to each other. So you might think we could use these as our p and q then in our equation of a circle, our parametric form in 3D. But unfortunately, because we've added two unit vectors or subtracted a unit vector from a unit vector, these two aren't necessarily actually unit vectors anymore because we've got the sum of unit vectors or the difference rather than actually having unit vectors. But then we can just do the same thing as before, divide through by the magnitude of each one, and then we will have some perpendicular unit vectors contained in this plane. So then we can read off now our general form for the parametric equation of a circle contained in this plane, given in its parametric form with center a, b, c, and a radius r. So we're going to have r cos theta and then this is multiplied by our p vector is going to be u hat plus v hat. But then because this is no longer necessarily a unit vector, we're just going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to put a big hat over that. So this is take, meaning that we take u hat plus v hat's magnitude and divide through by that. And then similarly, we've got r sine theta multiplied by its u hat minus v hat. And then the unit vector in the direction of that. And this is for theta between 0 and 2 pi again. So we've got this equation then for a circle with radius r and center a, b, c contained within this plane where we've got u and v are the two vectors contained within the plane. So I think this is a really nice expression other than perhaps having to have the u hat hat here and the similar for v. It's quite a nice way of expressing then the parametric form for a circle in general in 3D.